coming to systemic sarcoidosis, the main involvement is a lymphoreticular system and is usually characterized by cervical and mediastinal lymphadenopathy. In addition, spleen and liver are also involved because they are also part of the lymphatic distribution. It is known that sarcoidosis can affect the heart, eyes, kidney, bones, etc. can be affected. Let us see what are the systemic symptoms present. Coming to general symptoms, patients can present with fatigue, swollen lymph nodes which can be in the neck, there can be weight loss, pain and swelling in the joints such as the ankles. Lung symptoms may predominate with persistent dry cough, shortness of breath, wheezing, chest pain. Coming to the other systems involvement in sarcoidosis, many systems can be involved. It can involve the heart, producing symptoms of chest pain, dyspnea, can produce syncope, arrhythmias, palpitations, edema. And in addition, the eyes are very important in sarcoidosis. It can produce blurred vision, eye pain, burning, itching or the dry eyes. And this has to be differentiated from the common dry eyes of aging also. There can be a severe redness and sensitivity to light can be present. What I would like to stress here is sarcoidosis can affect the eyes even without causing any symptoms. So it is very important to check the eyes regularly at least once a year. And the skin symptoms can be in the form of a rash or purple bumps. They are generally located in the shins or in the ankles. In the face, you can have disfiguring lesions which can affect the nose, cheeks and the ears. Many times you find the patient wears a mask to cover these lesions. Growths under the skin particularly can occur around the scars or the tattoos. Now patients have lot of tattoos in their body, so these can occur under those tattoos also. Apart from these, sarcoidosis can also affect the calcium metabolism, the central and the peripheral nervous system, liver and spleen as already mentioned, can affect the muscles, bones, joints, kidneys, lymph nodes or any other organ involvement can take place. So it can present as a monophasic illness or the neurosarcoidosis can have a, a relapsing remitting course. That is, they can have an illness, improve with treatment, remit and stay remitted or they can have a relapse after some point of time or it can be a progressive disease with episodes of deterioration and that is no relapse and remitting but just progressive deterioration. The clinical features of neurosarcoidosis may be very variable. It can be papilledema, it can affect the cranial nerves, peripheral nerves, can also affect the muscles and it can also affect the meninges producing meningeal lesions. Cerebellum is affected, can get ataxia, hydrocephalus can occur. Neuroendocrine changes are also very important. It can present a syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion. It can produce changes in appetite, changes in sleep, autonomic impairment, weight gain, impotence, galactoria, etc. Apart from this, neuropsychiatric disturbance like psychosis can occur and dementia can be present. Recently, I have a patient under my care who is presented with recurrent hyponatremia. On evaluation, found it via SIADH and subsequently, the past history came out that she has been on treatment for sarcoidosis for quite some time and since she had become asymptomatic, last two years, they have stopped the treatment and now again, the sarcoidosis is flared up and she also has features of neurosarcoidosis.